Hi there, welcome along to the channel once again, great to see you. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to me if you did it right now, just click it right there, it's free, it takes a second to do so, helps the channel grow so much. You can also join the channel as a member. There are many membership packages available to you to help support and grow the channel. Thank you so much for your continued support. Anyway, on to today's topic. And I'm gonna share with you a new feature, still in preview at the moment, in Microsoft Purview, and it's called AI Hub. Without any further ado, let's get in there and check it out. So let's take a look at AI Hub. It's a preview feature within Microsoft Purview. It's just appeared here in my options on the left. What is it all about? Before we try it out and see how it actually works and all comes together, let's take a little look at the learn.microsoft.com page. So this is all about Purview data security and compliance protections for generative AI apps and you know this had to be coming right it's with the explosion of generative AI into everywhere but in Microsoft 365 being no exception we were going to need something like this within Microsoft Purview and we can use Purview to mitigate and manage the risks associated with AI usage and implement corresponding protection and governance controls we can use the AI hub in conjunction with other purview capabilities such as sensitivity labels, data classification, uh, and many, many more as you can see. What's it gonna provide? It's gonna give you insights, policies, and controls for your AI apps. And it's giving you a note here just to reinforce that fact that purview AI Hub is currently in preview and subject to change. So there we go, a nice little uh, guide here on how to get started, the steps that you need to take. Here's a nice little tale which shows you some of the things you need to do. Let's go through these together in my own tenant and we can see how far we get. Okay, back to the portal and on the checklist here for getting started, I'm already ahead of the game because Purview Audit is already turned on. Amazing. So next, let's go to install the Purview browser extension. Wonderful. What we need to do here is read through what the requirements are. It's gonna take us one hour to complete. Uh, browsing and sharing sensitive data with generative AI websites can be a potentially risky activity. And the Purview compliance extension for Edge, Chrome, and Firefox collect signals that help you detect when these activities occur. Wonderful. Learn more about the extension. Okay, so, well, let's click on that. I, uh, I was hoping it might allow me to install it there, but let's have a little see. Uh, here we go. Browser signal detection for Microsoft Edge. And we've got some options on how you can set this up. So we've got some browser requirements. We've got some basic setup for testing with Edge. And it looks like we can download it from here. There's some other options, how you can deploy this from Intune, uh, or you can use group policy, uh, okay. And then uh, similar things for Chrome as well, uh, and so on and so forth. So I'm using Edge here, so let's just go for the basic add-on here, and let's see if we can go get that. Amazing, it's telling me that's compatible with my browser. I want to add that extension, okay. And off it goes. And Purview extension has been added to Microsoft Edge. So you can use this extension by selecting this icon, uh, manage your extensions by clicking settings and more extensions. Okay, there we go. It wants me to sign in, but um, I, I don't think I'll do that just at the moment. I don't know if it's going to force me to do that in order to to make it work. I would, I would hope not. All right, next then. Let's go back, and I'm going to say that that's complete now in terms of my testing anyway. This is a test tenant, so I'm, I'm happy to... Uh, to mark that as complete. Uh, one hour to complete, I, I'm assuming that's because it 
it expects me to do that in a more diligent way and, and roll it out using Intune or group policy or, or whatever else. Right, next one. Onboard devices to Microsoft purview, not started yet. How to onboard Windows and Mac OS devices. Go to settings in Microsoft purview, select onboard devices. If devices are already onboarded to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, then your devices will show up in the manage devices list. And you can set up device onboarding for Microsoft purview. If devices have not been onboarded yet, you can download the appropriate script and deploy it to those devices. And you can get guidance here on how to onboard devices into Microsoft purview. So settings and onboard devices. Now, I don't think I've done this in actual fact. Let's just have a little look at, well, it doesn't say onboarding devices, it says device onboarding. Let's take a wee look. Uh, in fact, I've done nothing. So no devices onboarded yet. To onboard devices for use in compliance solutions, you first need to turn on device onboarding. Okay, we're gonna do that. Let's do it. Okay, might take a while, so refresh the page often to check the progress. And when it's turned on, any devices that are already onboarded to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint will appear in the device list. I know for a fact that I have not onboarded my device to Defender for Endpoint, so what I might do here is I might pause the video, do just that, and then come back, and then we'll continue. So we're back and that's done now. I've onboarded devices to Microsoft Purview. What is the last thing on our checklist? We need to extend your insights for data discovery. And that revolves around discovering sensitive data in the user interactions with other generative AI apps. If we tick this, this is what it's gonna do for us. It's gonna set up some policies. An insider risk policy to discover users browsing to other AI assistants. Insider risk management policy will be called Microsoft AI Hub Browsing and AI Assistance. We're also going to get a DLP policy to discover sensitive data pasted or uploaded to other AI assistants. What to expect? Well, policies that have already been created will be skipped, and only policies that do not exist will be created. There's no impact to end users. It's going to be in audit mode only. Alerts will be generated in insider risk management for potentially risky browsing activity in other AI assistants and risky prompts and sensitive responses. If you've already got adaptive protection set up and want to consider these activities to assign insider risk levels, then that must be configured in adaptive protection. And browsing events in other AI systems will be shown in the Activity Explorer. They won't be anonymized even if anonymization is turned on in Insider Risk Management. So it's creating the policies for us now. Let's see what happens. There we go. Our policies have been created. Wonderful. So let's go and take a look at those policies and see what's going on with them. If we go on to Data Loss Prevention and the Overview, uh, let's go down and take a little look. So if we go to data loss prevention, click onto our policies, let's see what we have got. Okay, we can see at the bottom here, well, we can just about see if that thing disappears. Uh, Microsoft AI Hub, discover sensitive prompts in AI assistance. Okay, so it's actually turned that on, which is not what I was expecting, but fine, fair enough. Let's go and have a look and see exactly what it's done in here, what that looks like. Okay, so let's go through and, right, so it's a device-based DLP policy and we've got this advanced DLP rule. So let's take a look at that. Let's edit it and see what's included within it. We've got some sensitive information types. Looks like we've got all of those baked in. And yeah, and audit or restrict activities on devices when specific activities are detected. Oh, I see, so audit only within uh, the policy rather than block with override or block IIC. I misinterpreted that to mean that it wouldn't actually turn the DLP policy on. So upload to a restricted cloud service domain or access from unallowed browsers, paste to supported browsers. 
And then we've got file activity, and then it looks like it's all just standard stuff from here on in. So this area here is where all the, the good stuff is happening. Uh, so cool. Let's take a look at the insider risk management policy that it created as well. Okay, so it's loading that up for us. Go to policies. And here we go, Microsoft AI Hub, right there, browsing in AI assistance. Okay, healthy policy, that's good. No alerts yet, I wouldn't expect that to be. Let's edit it and see what it looks like, what it's created for us. And uh, the policy template, um, oh, okay, I see. So, uh, risky browser, usage preview, devices onboarded, Required. Why can't I select? Oh, here we go. Name your policy. What's in here? Users and groups. All users and groups. Uh, it's not prioritizing any particular content. User browse to a potentially risky website. Uh, here we go. Browse to generative AI websites. There we are. Indicators. Apply the built-in thresholds. Uh, indicators selected one out of 14. The indicators needed to create this policy aren't available because they're currently turned off for your organization. Uh, I, I wonder if that is because I don't have the particular license for that, but let's just see. Uh, let's just click save, see what happens. <laughs> Hit and hope. Okay, don't do that in the real world. <laughs> okay, so da, da, da. did that actually do anything? I do not know. Uh, select all. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Oh, onboard devices to use these indicators. Well, I have onboarded devices, um, but it's perhaps not yet taken effect fully throughout all of Microsoft purview. So uh, Microsoft Defend for Endpoint Indicators. Uh, yeah, okay, so I've still not quite met all those prerequisites to, to get that working, but hopefully you get the idea. So with, with that done, with the initial parts completed, um, we can now consider that all done and everything else will catch up. What have we got in here? We've got some recommendations. We've got get guided assistance to AI regulations. So stay on track with newly established industry regulations for AI. So here we can get guidance on that. Monitor logs. Uh, and it's telling us how to do that. Configuring the search, filter, on the workload filter, select co-pilot, select the sense of information type, okay. Monitor AI actions, interactions in other apps. Uh, okay, review, review interactions, turn on policies. Yep, flag risky communications. So access communication and compliance and create a policy, define the necessary conditions and fields for users and reviewers and select co-pilot as a location. All good stuff. Prevent sensitive data from being shared in generative AI apps. So access DLP, create policy, customize DLP rules, Teams chat and channel messages in other locations uh, and customize the advanced rules for those sensitive information types and uh, retention and deletion policies for AI interactions. Okay, so there are quite a few things to do here, more things to, to go through, and then you can mark them as complete. You can go to view the regulations. Looks like it's gonna take you right into Compliance Manager here to do that, uh, and it'll show you all the applicable regulations here. I wonder if it's gonna filter, um, right, okay. Um, so that's, it looks like it has. Uh, perhaps, so let's go back to the AI Hub. So uh, even after that getting started bit, there are there are things that you need to do uh, to go through to 
to, to make this happen. So um, we need to create labels in information protection, uh, deploy a label policy, and then publish it. And then, um, yeah, controlling access to, well, I've got some sensitivity labels. Is this telling me anything specific about AI in this instance? Uh, Copilot for Microsoft 365 honors the sensitivity label on files and only shows the user of the files if they already have access to it. Okay. And what else we've got? AI data analytics. It's building these out for me. Uh, that's going to take about 24 hours and again and again. So we're going to have to wait a little while for that to come into, into force. If we go into policies, I see... So it's got some recommendations here to fortify your data security for AI, uh, keep your sensitive data protected with adaptive protection, prevent data leakages in other generative AI apps, uh, control unethical behavior. Um, okay, so what are these gonna point us to? Oh, it's gonna create more policies, data security for AI, adaptive protection to block sensitive information pasted or uploaded to 3P AI apps. Um, oh, green, my labels already exist. So, okay, we can create those policies. That's, that's good. I'm sensing what might be a good idea here is if we just do this starting video to show you what you need to do to, to get going with this. And maybe we'll follow up with a, with another follow up video to see how this is built up after a period of time. So, um, it's going to set up a policy here for unethical behavior. Okay, let's create that policy. So these policies are scattered across different apps within Purview, like DLP and like information protection. But you can also see all the policies right here from within the AI hub as well, which is really nice. So as we're creating these, we can see all the policies in our list. So we can close that. So here we go. Uh, so we've got that inside a risk management one, our DLP. I'm guessing if we give that a refresh now, the ones that we just created. Uh, yeah, there we go. We've got four in there now. So we've got two DLP ones, one inside a risk management, one AI hub. So that's that. We've completed those suggested policies. And the final thing is Activity Explorer. And have we got anything in here yet? I don't know if we will. No data to display as yet. I would be surprised if there was. So I think now is a good time to wind up this video. We've shown you the setup uh, in this one. We'll come back with a follow-up video and show you some of the activity that's been detected. So there you go, AI Hub. That's actually hard to say. In preview, just a reminder there, but it looks very, very promising. And as you've seen there, we've set it up, we've configured it, and I need to leave it, let it run a bit now, and uh, gather some activity and intelligence and whatnot, and see if I can play around in the meantime and get some of the policies to trigger. And when I feel it's uh, built up enough, uh, I'll do another video and show you the results. But uh, hopefully that sets the scene nicely for what it is, what it can do, why it's there, and all that good stuff. Let me know if you've tried it yourself yet in your own tenants and what you think about it. I think it looks pretty good. Right, anyhow, let's wind up the video and do hit that subscribe button, please. Uh, hit the thumbs up, the like if you've enjoyed it, and uh, don't forget the notifications bell so you never miss a video. Okay, I shall say goodbye and see you all very soon. Take care.